What's going on YouTube? So today is going to be much different video than what we normally put out. I uh, look forward to it. Hope y'all enjoy it. Um, but we are going to introduce a new team member for HWE. And she's already been a, a longtime friend, a great customer. She's recently moved here, not just to work for me. Of course, I'm sure that's an extra plus for her. Um, but she's she works at a nearby hospital. And uh, I really look forward to you know seeing where this takes off. She'll be answering a lot of questions on our social media stuff or making comments on our social media stuff. Um, you may even be purchasing animals uh, from, or, or you'll be purchasing them from HWE, but you may be talking to her when you're purchasing uh, snakes through social media or maybe even morph market or emails or websites or things like that. So who knows what she's going to be into. Uh, she was in Daytona helping us already. So a lot of y'all got to meet her down there and she's a great asset, has been a great asset and I'm sure will continue to be a great asset to HWE. So we're going to introduce her here in a second. And then we're also going to talk about some behind the scenes about doing shows. I get asked a lot about, you know, what's it take to do a show? You know, how long does it take you to get ready for a show? Um, we're we're going to dive into the whole process a little bit. And it's great that Brittany got to experience her really first time doing a real big show. She's done shows before for other uh, friends and, and other companies, but she got to see what it's like to really put on a, you know, a big show. I mean, Daytona was a big show. We've done eight tables. And um, she got to see a lot of that uh, behind the scenes and help setting up and things along those lines. So I'm going to get her opinion as well as I'll, you know, shoot some information here and there for everybody as well. But uh, anyway, so let's introduce Miss Brittany and get the ball rolling. Hang with me. All right. Good. Yep. Good. All right. So this is Miss Brittany. Hi. And I uh, just want you to introduce yourself and then, you know, maybe explain... How did you get into this? How did you meet us? You know, I don't know. Just <laughs> spill your light, spill your beans out. Yeah. So my name is Brittany. Um, I've been breeding snakes since uh, 2019. Um, honestly, it really started when I started working at a very well-known pet store in Virginia Beach. Um, I started, I guess, communicating with Tony when I purchased the ivory blackhead red ringer gene, and it just kind of went on from there. Um, it's been such a great pleasure knowing Tony and I, I can't say that I prefer any other breeder other than him. So well, it's I, awesome to be on the team. I definitely appreciate that too. How many years has that been? Oh, uh, let me see. We started talking, let me see, 20, I guess 2019 when I started breeding. Okay. So four years ago ish. Yeah. So right on. Um, were you like, when you were growing up, did you... Were you into reptiles? Did your family keep and have reptiles? or? So, my family's always been scared of reptiles, so I had an interest. When Mine I too, was... by the way. <laughs> I had an interest. Um, I guess the first animal I held was a carpet python, and just, you know, just working with that snake was just incredible. So, I guess that's where it all bloomed, and that was when I was, like, 13, so. I got you. So, you've bred, or, first of all, you, you keep more than just ball pythons. Yes. So you've bred multiple animals. How many species do you think you've bred over the years? Um, so as far as breeding, I would say just ball pythons, but I've kept uh, carpet pythons. Yeah, bearded pythons. dragons. That's true. Yes, I did breed bearded dragons. I worked with the purple paradoxes and getting some eggs for crested geckos. Yep, that's true. That's true. Crested geckos, um, and I used to do hog noses too. Okay. Yeah. Right so a little bit more diverse than just ball pythons. Yeah. So at least we're keeping anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Right on. So, um, so Brittany was able to go down to Daytona with us, and this was probably the biggest quote-unquote show that she's yeah. <laughs> participated in. That's for sure. Um, so, and it's going to be hard stepping up from here on because that was a pretty <laughs> awesome show. Yeah, we done uh, we done real good. Um, anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna get some chairs in here and sit down. It's going to be probably a long video. But uh, we really want to talk about what it's like to do a show and what it's like for Brittany to have experienced doing mm -hmm. that show, getting a good behind-the-scenes view. Yeah. So, all right, let us set everything up and get right back to you. So we're using the tripod, so I hope we're in, uh, 
in frame like we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's late at night and Cassie's already inside with the kids. So I uh, do apologize for that. You don't get any of that crazy stuff she does <laughs> with it. But uh, anyway, so, huh, and she's not really as tall. I'm just sitting down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want my head to be chopped off in the frame so anyway uh so yeah so what is what is doing a show like so uh, i just want to say before we get too far into it majority of people have no idea what it's like to do a large frame show mm -hmm. um to, to to do what we do when we set up for these big shows um it's it's a it's a long process so uh, what shows do we do? Currently, uh, we do Daytona once a year. We do uh, both Arlington's and both Tim's. Um, and we're, we may pick up a show here and there, but for the most part, it's just those five every year. Um, we have a ton of animals, as you can probably see in the background. Um, there's a lot of babies, so we may try to pick up some more shows. Um, so the show starts... Uh, really starts, you know, like that Monday before, before we leave. And mm -hmm. depending on where the show is, depends on where we, you know, what time we leave. Uh, no matter what show it is, I want to be there first thing Friday morning to start setting up. Uh, doesn't matter if we're going to Arlington, Tinley, California, Florida, Maine. I don't really care. I'm going to be there uh, Friday morning. Mm -hmm. I want to be there first thing Friday morning to get up and going. And... There's multiple reasons for that, but the two main reasons that I want to be there first thing is, one, I want to have my stuff set up. I'm ready to get it done, over with, as far as the setting the process up. I want to make sure I don't have any hiccups. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap, I forgot something. Might have to run a store and pick up something, which thankfully I've never had to do, or have to borrow something from somebody, you know, whatever. I want to make sure I got everything I need to get the show started. I don't want to come in last minute. But also, I make a lot of sales on Friday. You got the VIP yeah. people, and you got other vendors that are coming in there, and mm -hmm. I do some selling on Friday. So if I'm, you know, there's been times where I've done a lot of money on a Friday that had I waited till earlier or later on Friday or Saturday morning, that I might not have been able to make those sales. Right. So that's another reason why I like to do it. So back up to when we actually leave. Um, that depends on how far it is. So if I know that I got to drive 16 hours to Tinley or 16 hours to Arlington or 48 hours to California or wherever, mm -hmm. I have to plan according to that. Um, but Daytona, we'll just stick with Daytona. We left on Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. So and, and, and Brittany followed us down there. But that doesn't mean that's where the show starts. Because mm -hmm. what, what day were we in here? Um, so you mean in the snake room? Yep. Oh, gosh. We were in here probably a couple of weeks before just organizing what animals that we're going to be taking. Yep. Um, but if we had to say like a, a specific day, um, I'd say that was like Thursday the week before. Yep. Yeah. So, so you start planning this many weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you wait or, or I wait until, you know, that Monday or Tuesday prior I like to already have a sheet of what's going um, the weekend prior to the show. Mm -hmm. So that gives me an idea of how many animals I'm taking, how many displays I need to take, how many deli cups I need to have, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of preparation um, up until that point. Plus, you got to clean heavy before you leave. You got to yeah. feed before <laughs> you leave. You know, all these normal routines, which my normally my cleaning and feeding and stuff is normally done Sunday through Thursday. Um, so it doesn't mess up my schedule too, too much, but I still get try to get stuff done prior to, and then I have to play catch up when I get back. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of processes that change, you know, for a show week or weekend. Um, but anyway, let's just say, you know, around Tuesday or uh, Wednesday even, we start packing animals. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday, I don't usually pack on Tuesdays unless I'm going all the way across the country. But uh, Wednesdays, if that's pretty much the day that we pack animals, um, which is a long day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so packing all the animals up, getting everything ready, packing the trailers up, packing the car up. 
starting to get your clothes out ready, just like you're going somewhere important. Um, you know, all that starts on Wednesday. And then we either leave on Wednesdays mm -hmm. or in this particular case, we left Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. um, so, filled you in that far. What did you see come Thursday? Thursday? So, drove in... The Man, you had a ton of stuff. I was actually shocked by how much you had. Um, so Thursday, we rolled in, got into the hotel, and we just kind of set out the plan for what would be happening on Friday. You wanted us there early. You wanted it all set up because the thing about Fridays is that, and I didn't know this, but there's VIPs that come in. And a lot of times, like, those VIPs might actually also be other breeders. And... They're wanting to come see everything before the crowd gets there. So they're the ones usually coming in and getting the higher dollar animals. So I see the importance of like setting up everything first, making sure that they can see all of those animals. Thursday, we drive down there, get into a hotel room. Well, uh, most shows won't let you pack the animals in. Mm -hmm. Some will, some won't. I did not know that Daytona would let you get in on Thursday night, or I probably would have went in and took the animals in. Uh, but anyway, we didn't. We took, uh, we we got a hotel room for Thursday night. We took all four cases, uh, and I mean cases like big Tupperware mm -hmm. things full of animals, into the hotel room with us, and uh, we crashed. You know, we, we well, we went out and had, you know, dinner and, and then crashed. But uh, Friday morning, like I said, was bright and early. You know, mm -hmm. bright and early, hopping to it and ready to get things rolling. Uh, this particular show... We actually had Jonathan and Caitlin Wilcox. They flew in to help us out. Um, we had my, my buddy Chris Bankus and his wife Dawn mm -hmm. came out. Uh, Brittany was obviously there. And then uh, two of the girls from the Florida Rattery were also there. And, you know, it, it was a bunch of, bunch of hands on deck. And, you know, even with that many people, it still took all day Friday. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly what time we set everything up, but we had eight tables. We had two tables worth of displays. We had two tables worth of a big tower and deli cup animals and crested geckos. We had three tables of swag and a clothes rack full of swag. And then I had a table with the knives on them. And uh, then we put the truss system up, which is goes over all eight tables. Mm -hmm. and we hang lights from. I mean, it was pretty much five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I'd say, if not, a little later. By the time we, we actually, <laughs> you know, finished up. Mm -hmm. So that isn't an entire, and they and they let us in at 10. I thought, we thought it was 9, so we got there at 9, mm -hmm. but they didn't let us in until 10. So that is, a, from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock, I didn't even eat lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody ate lunch, it was just some bull crap. Yeah, like snack stuff <laughs> or whatever they had at, so at the hotel. Seven hours. I'm talking about seven hours of hard uh, manual labor, and, and don't get me wrong, we're all cutting up, we're having food, everybody's excited, mm -hmm. but it's still work. Right. A lot of work went into setting everything up. Um, but it gets, you know, it it feels good, mm -hmm. you know, once it's all set up. Because then when you roll in there Saturday morning, pull the curtains off, check for poops everywhere, and then it's game. Yep, um, game on. <laughs> so Friday night, after after everybody left, everybody's tired, you know, everybody was there. We uh, rented an Airbnb, uh, so we had a hotel and an Airbnb um, that we split up, and um, we all just kind of chilled out Friday. I don't remember. What, what, I think we went we made Mexican food just mm -hmm. a couple of blocks down the road. We found a Mexican joint. Uh, everybody enjoyed a good meal, hanging out. Just our crew, though. Mm -hmm. um, normally, when we do shows, like, you know, we try to do these big parties. Uh, and I don't mean party like party party, but like parties of people. Um, we go out and eat and things like that, but my crew was spent. Mm -hmm. Like all we wanted to do is just chill out, grab a bite to eat, have a couple of beers, and um, and we just you know hung out. Mm -hmm. So uh, Friday night ended, and then we stayed up. Uh, I don't know, a little late, but uh, I don't sleep real good, so I probably slept like three hours on Friday night because ready to go Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday was the big day, so. Everybody wakes up Saturday morning, and it's go time. All right, so apologize there. We had to take a little break in case his phone was dying. So uh, anyway, so Saturday morning is, is go time. So after a long day of driving, 
and setting up on Friday. setting up on Friday and very little sleep Saturday morning you got to put the smile on your face and sell some animals <laughs> so yeah. um, I just want to say that I personally sold I don't know two or three snakes and a couple of pieces of swag and a, couple, and a knife or two and my crew done the rest um, I interacted a lot with customers. I was able to bounce back and forth answering questions for my crew as, you know, they, they don't know all the answers when, when the customers was asking them. So they would, they would turn around and ask me. I'd shoot them the answer. They'd repeat my answer to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, 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 they killed it. So This was the first show that you actually got to, like, walk around the yep. entire venue too I, I i took some money with me um i'm looking for a couple of snakes uh, i really need a good hypo mail i need a really good puzzle mail um and just looking for something that I, you know i might could plug into some projects in general unfortunately i uh, wasn't very impressed by uh, much of the ball python stuff at, at daytona um, i don't know if everybody didn't bring their a game um hadn't hatched their A-game yet, or just for whatever reason, it just didn't impress me very much, and that, that was very disappointing. So I finally had a chance to look around, mm -hmm. and then couldn't find anything to buy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So, um, but anyway, so I did get to walk around and talk with other vendors and friends, and, and uh, you know, every time you go somewhere, every time I would go somewhere, I'd get stopped by other people, you know, where you set up at, you know, and all that type of stuff, talking, and it, it was great. It was, I felt like I got to sit back. Um, flip side of that is, it was also the hardest show that I've ever done because for the first time in 10 years, I didn't sell animals to my customers. Um, some people bought animals from hardwired exotics that I never spoke to, and that was very hard very difficult uh for me and i bounced luckily my wife is in complete support system and she was there because sometimes i'd break down on it you know oh yeah i'd freak out because of, you know what what if they told them the wrong information or what mm -hmm. if they told them the wrong this or wrong that and and i put together a team that i trusted and then she kept reminding me you put this team together because you trusted them. Mm -hmm. Let them do what you trust them to do. And it was very difficult for me. Um, extremely difficult. Probably the hardest thing I've done outside of family related things. Uh, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. So, but my team executed and flawlessly. I mean, just, yeah, I we... could not have asked for a better anything that happened in Daytona from them. So yeah, we definitely killed it for sure. Um, two days. <clears throat> I don't think there was there was not anybody at our table, not not at our table for two days. Um, somebody was talking to somebody the entire time. Uh, we sold a lot of snakes. We sold a good bit of swag, some geckos, a um, couple of knives. I mean, it, it was just a fantastic show. Absolutely crazy. Couldn't believe it. Um, great day Saturday, probably the best, best show that, uh, ever had Saturday wraps up. Um, and you know, they have the big auction down in Daytona, um, for us arc. And, uh, sometimes we go, sometimes we don't, it's a lot of people. I don't do real good with people. Um, especially in a closed environment like that, where it's really more congested than what it, even a show is. Um, I don't do real good. So um, we usually don't go, not that I don't support it. Um, I just choose not to go to it because of it being so tight. Uh, mm -hmm. but I really expected some of our team members to want to go mm -hmm. and they didn't. They, they were like, look, let's just, let's keep the team together and go grab a bite to eat and crash. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's what we did. So we went and grabbed at a little tavern place in, in Daytona and had a couple of beers again and went back to the Airbnb and hotels and crashed out. Uh, I did get, you know, a few more hours sleep. I'd say maybe six hours sleep uh, that night. And then um, then Sunday rolls around. It's the same routine. So mm -hmm. back back to it. Uh, we get there early first thing 
Doors open at 9 on Sunday. We got there, pulled the curtains off, cleaned the poops up, and done what my crew done. So mm -hmm. I didn't sell anything on Sunday. I <laughs> sold everything. Uh, all I did was get drugged around by Cassie buying geckos. <laughs> so so, so uh, anyway, um, which she did end up getting a really cool, really wide exanthic uh, male for her collection. But... Uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. Pretty much the only thing we really spent big money on, um, unfortunately, because I had money I wanted to spend. But mm -hmm. anyway, it's all good. Um, yeah. So we'll let Brittany tune in in just a second. But Sunday afternoon, show closed at 5 o'clock. That's when the real work begins, in my opinion, because all that mm -hmm. stuff that got put up has got to be tore down. Mm -hmm. um, we started tearing down about 4.30. And I think I think we walked out or was pulling out about 6:40, so that's two hours of very strenuous, uh, hard labor, mm -hmm. uh, tearing everything down. I was soaked with sweat, walking back and forth through the trailer, packing the trailer, uh, parking lot. I mean, it's Florida; it's 115,000 yeah. <laughs> degrees. Um, I mean, it was a lot of work, and then, and then we drove home. Um, four and a half hours so you know we got after we stopped and ate somewhere and got some gas things like that I mean it's it's midnight um, get all the animals I think Brittany came over it was 12 30 something like that when Brittany got here and we unloaded animals mm -hmm. put everything back in tubs checked on all the animals uh, you know had some clutches that were hatching and some that had shed out. I mean, it was just a load of work. Uh, I think we got. I think I got in bed around two thirty Monday morning, and then up at up at seven o'clock. Um, time to get the kids to school and and get back on normal routine on Monday. So, um, and and even on Monday it was unloading the trailer and this and that trailer still sitting out here and it is <laughs> here it is Wednesday. I hadn't even put all the trailer stuff up yet. So, you know, it's a it's an entire week. Of a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's a lot. There's a lot to doing a show. Uh, a tremendous amount to doing a show. I get stressed when I leave because there's so much going on here. Mm -hmm. You know what happens to my rats. You know, uh, we. I have. I have somebody that I pay to check on things, but that doesn't mean that he can fix everything. Um, you know, females were laying eggs. Um, I mean, it's just a lot. It's a lot. I can say a lot over and over and over, but until you experience it, you will never understand. Yeah. And this was the closest show that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't imagine Arlington. With well, you're fixing to. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, that that's my that's that's what happened for me in Daytona. Um, I'm going to shut up because I said that she was going to talk, so I'm going to let her <laughs> um, let her tell you how you know how some of that went down. 